I'm going far right. He's gonna get away. No, he's not. Front runner, this is Bravo Six. Nowadays, no one cares about Call of Duty campaigns. Black Ops 4 didn't even have one, and I don't want to talk about World War II or Black Ops 3. Try and go boom. I don't even remember anything about Kevin Spacey's racy robot warfare daycare, or whatever it was called. What you're seeing is advanced warfare. Who is Kevin Spacey and why is he in Call of Duty? But there was a time, way back when, a golden age where every aspect of a Call of Duty game was equal. You can get no scoped by wookie looking teenagers who have done just awful things to too many mothers around the globe. Seriously, someone needs to stop these kids and protect these moms. You can jump into a co-op mode with the boys and just shoot the breeze or grind out easter eggs and zombies or spec ops. But this would all start with the blockbuster over the top high tier campaign that was always included. You'd stay for the multiplayer lessons and the new cuss words you never heard before, but you'd always come for the campaign. Earlier this year, Activision announced their plan to combat COVID-19 by releasing a remake of the greatest Call of Duty game of all time. But just one third of it. Modern Warfare 2 Campaign Remastered takes, in my opinion, the best Call of Duty campaign and puts all new sorts of bells and whistles in it. New graphics, every gun has new reload animations, new sounds, some new overall animations that weren't even there before, all sorts of cool stuff. Is it the definitive way to play Modern Warfare 2? No, of course it's not, it's missing two-thirds of the original game. But is it the definitive way to play the campaign? Well, that depends. Depends on whether you believe the added details add or remove something from the experience. For example, the addition of a new vaulting animation, which got me killed several times because I thought it'd be like the old game where I could just jump over something without being locked in the animation. I don't know about that. The mission where you have to protect the honey badger featured a mechanic where you could add, every gun had a laser sight which you can point and start bombarding houses with. But they switched that out so it's just a stock little pistol. Which you have new animations for, for pulling out the pistol, then aiming it, then firing, rather than just toggling on and off the laser like before, which is precious seconds you need, especially on veteran mode. But they changed the M16 road animation, so it's the same as Modern Warfare 1's, rather than Modern Warfare 2's original M16 animation, which is a copy-paste of the M4's road animation. And that I like. I think that is a good improvement. So why am I getting so upset over these little, seemingly tedious details? Because playing on Veteran is way too freaking hard. And these little details change the game so much, those seconds you waste pulling out the stupid little gun rather than just toggling the laser on and off is a difference between life and death. However, one advantage the remake has over the original, despite the little small grievances I have with the game, is they actually improved upon something that most people neglected in Modern Warfare 2, the original Modern Warfare 2. And that is the absolutely beautiful skyboxes the game has. The atmosphere of the game is something that always seems to be overlooked. The campaign's already really overshadowed by its multiplayer and Spec Ops brothers, but the quiet, powerful moments in the campaign are always overshadowed by all the crazy, more bombastic moments towards the end. And there's a uh, one smaller mission that most people don't talk about. It's, that doesn't seem very remarkable, but for some reason, I guess it's popular. That kind of steals the thunder away from the quiet moments as well. But those more silent moments are often moments before the crazy intense bouts of violence and action. And honestly, I believe those moments highlight even the most controversial scenes of the game. Actually, wait a minute, hold on. Let's, let's back up a bit and address the elephant in the room. No Russian is actually a very good micro example of the design decision I'm talking about. The calm before the storm approach to storytelling, if you will. No Russian begins with a black screen, some gun reloads and clicks, and the small ding of the elevator and the doors opening. Snami <laughs> Bog. Remember, no Russian. And then there's one of the most haunting, violent moments in any game, ever.
all those news articles shutting down Modern Warfare 2 and games in general, all the senator talks and all the controversy, all the sweeping media coverage over Modern Warfare 2, all began with a black screen and a small elevator ding before the actual violence was shown. Jim, let's start with you. You got some problems with this game. There are multiple levels throughout the campaign that also that approach the same dis design philosophy. They give you an introduction to the environment before any actual gameplay begins. Loose Ends give you, gives you this beautiful sprawling wilderness before you even fire a bullet, which you only briefly get to explore before the game throws a new mechanic curveball at you with this small little stupid little bouncing buddy thing. A small burst of violence to fight into the estate, then calmness as you prepare for the onslaught that's about to begin, which then leads to a daring escape only for you to be randomly critted by Shepard. <laughs> no! The mission literally begins with the player facing the skybox and environment, then erupts into the narrative peak of the entire game. It starts slow, then action, then slow, then action, then more intense action, then finally the most intense action. Cliffhanger and Contingency both follow the same design decision of starting off with slow, quiet, snowy landscapes, and then ending the mission with the usual crazy, bombastic Call of Duty violence we all know and love. Most missions seem to follow this format, actually. Quiet start, action, quiet middle section, some new gimmick or mechanic, and a shocking finale to the mission. Every marine mission seems to follow this, honestly, and most of the SAS missions follow this as well. It's a solid design formula, and it works really well for most of the missions in the game. However, I would argue that this formula would not nearly be as effective as it is if we took out those quiet segments. Even when I first played the campaign back in 2009 as a snot-nosed, angsty, pre-teen middle schooler, I was still taken aback by the serene, snowy forest of contingency. Walking across the bridge to witness the destruction of suburbia, the beginning of The Only Easy Day Was Yesterday, which is an awesome mission title, has you swimming through the Arctic before getting down and dirty with wet work on top of the oil rig. And shoutouts to my boy Second Son, which starts with the player literally stationary and looking at this amazing Earth space environment Infinity Ward created. Seriously, nobody talks about this mission, it's gorgeous. Modern Warfare's atmosphere perfectly fits the tone and vibe it's going for. The perfect blend of Hollywood action and morally gray military violence. All the missions in the campaign go back and forth between quiet, peaceful, almost dreamlike serene atmospheres to <laughs> Gunfuck Town USA, population you baby, which I think really helps illustrate the kind of violence it's trying to show. Your comrades will just randomly die, sometimes next to you, sometimes away from you, sometimes you shoot a stray bullet and kill one of them by accident. Everyone on the battlefield is equal, even if they're named and have been with you for the entire campaign, they still may even die. Even if it's the player, even if it's you, you still may die. Out of the five characters you play as throughout the course of the campaign, only two of them live to see the end. There's a trio of missions that I believe perfectly captures this duality between action and morally gray violence. Act 2 of the campaign ends with the American soldiers basically getting royally boned over in America's great capital. You walk out of a bunker filled with injured, suffering troops, only to emerge from it to witness the Washington Monument getting destroyed. This is the start of the trilogy of missions that take place in Washington, D.C. The Washington, D.C. anime arc of Modern Warfare 2, if you will. The second mission takes place after Captain Price launches a nuke and EMPs the entire city. No red dots, no lasers, no technology. Only the scrambling survivors on both sides of the conflict trying to survive in this massive raining thunderstorm monsoon with barely working weapons. It's a beautiful mission, both aesthetically and from a design standpoint. This attack to cool equipment you've been accustomed to is now gone. Back to iron sights and barely seeing your enemies. Low visibility, uncertainty, just plain hopelessness ooze out of this mission. And it's a mission I think a lot of people often overlook from this campaign. There's the ice now. Whiskey will have to be inside. Oh man, we gotta go up there. Especially that sense of hopelessness. It's everywhere in this mission. All three of the DC missions, really. But that hopelessness doesn't quite set in until this mission. Your team feels hopeless. What the hell are we gonna do now, man? Rusty got us out, now we 
shit's falling through the sky, we're screwed, man. We're Get totally up. hooped. Get it, Bimbo. The enemies I don't feel know. hopeless. Star! Cover me. Star! Say Texas, damn it. Say it. Go die! Everything around you is destroyed. All your guns barely work. Things are falling out of the sky. The mission literally starts with you looking at your bleeding hands with one last mag, trying to hold on, but you know it's hopeless. But this hopelessness really, really hits home in the final act of the Washington DC arc. Emerging from the underground, seeing the monsoon leak heavily through the roof, only to meet your pinned down comrade. The commander tells you that the White House is falling, and all you can do as a soldier is desperately cling to the idea of fighting them back for as long as you can. You see the White House be has become a shell of its former self. Your comrades are getting slaughtered on its front lawn as if it was the beaches in Normandy. There's a full moon out and heavy rain. Electronics are still down, and Hans Zimmer's score sweeps over the battlefield as you finally realize it. You've lost this fight. You lost this fight several missions ago. And maybe as a player you realize it a little bit ago, but here it now finally sets in and you see what it means to truly lose a mission. That's how this level starts. The Crumbling White House, or Crumbling Whiskey Hotel if that's the lingo you prefer, is a very powerful symbol. So powerful it's actually on the box art of the game, but it's a symbol that I feel is overlooked compared to the more bombastic, controversial missions of the game. But that destroyed White House not only represents the great loss the Americans felt from Shepard's plan to gain power in the war he started between America and Russia, it represents the strong environmental atmosphere this game has. Every mission has the foundation of a very simple but extremely effective backdrop to really highlight its violence, which really goes to show how amazing a game Modern Warfare 2 really is. Those skyboxes and Beautiful level design that goes so unnoticed really sells the moments people do remember. I'll never forget Burger Town, the estate safe house, DC in ruins, and of course that infamous Russian airport. The devs cared deeply for all parts of the game, campaign included. And while the Modern Warfare 2019 reboot was a step in the right direction, and Black Ops Cold War looks like it might be as well, I'm not sure they'll, they'll live up to how extremely well done Modern Warfare 2's campaign was. It really was the perfect blend of action, movie, and grounded combat. A lot of games in the 360 PS3 Wii era tried to mimic the cinematic action and feel of Hollywood movies. If that really is the case, the Modern Warfare 2 might just be the best action movie game we have so far. If you've gotten this far into the video, I want to say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know down in the comments below what your favorite parts of Modern Warfare 2 were, what your favorite Call of Duty campaign really is. If you liked my content and want to see more, please consider subscribing. It really does help me out a lot. Thank you guys as always, and take care.